Come on, son of, you could at least put the pro on the enclosure itself so we would know which one we're having in hand. Hey guys, Sonoff has released a new Zigbee Bridge or Zigbee Hub and it's called Sonoff Zigbee Bridge Pro. So what is so pro about this one that you want to just drop anything else that you have to coordinate your Zigbee Mesh Network and start using this? You probably guessed it from the intro to this video that this is a second Zigbee Bridge from Sonoff Collection. Now, it's the latest and the greatest, but I already covered the previous one, and if you want to find out what was good about it, then there's a video about this uh, in a corner, followed by a video about how to flash custom firmware coordinator and Tasmota on that bridge as well. Inside the box you'll find the Zigbee Bridge Pro, obviously, and uh, the security pin, used to reset the device and probably one of the shortest cables ever. Now this is a micro USB cable which I'm really annoyed at because come on it's a pro product at least add USB Type-C. It is identical to a fold on the outside and it uses the same interfaces so you handle Zigbee 3.0 on one side that connects it to a Wi-Fi via ESP32 which means you're limited to 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. But this time around, the device isn't limited to 32 sub-devices. We can connect a staggering number of 128 sub-devices. Which links to the biggest change inside. This is not EFR32 based. This time around we have CC2652. Uh, to handle our Zigbee 3.0 alongside ESP32, which we know and love, to handle the internet end. If you look at the PCB, this is not the only addition. Apart from the new ICs on the board, we also have a battery, which supports real-time clock. I'm gonna explain why in a second. And then extra PS RAM to store all those names for 128 sub-devices. It's definitely gonna be needed. And as this is a son of product, we have a properly exposed dev pass, which means you'll find your familiar interface to interact with ESP32, and there's plenty of different pins to connect to the Zigbee coordinator as well, which means flashing this thing it's not going to be difficult, especially just like USB son of dongle plus, which I covered in this video, it is based on a very similar IC. So I really can't wait for the community to come up with a great instructions how to flash one of these and have a custom coordinator firmware on it. But for now we're gonna talk Ewolink. As the device uses ESP32 to connect, the pairing is done via Bluetooth. It's the, probably one of the best ways to pair some of devices right now because it's quick and very effective. And once I have it paired, I've opened Ewolink app and I quickly discovered that there are some changes. First, we have the alarm suit. I think the son of is following the likes of Xiaomi or Agara and introducing that extra functionality to take all of those sensors and build your own security system and make it slightly easier. I mean, in the past you could still use the smart automation panel in Ewilang app to create similar behaviors, but that uh, panel and shortcuts to arm and disarm different modes, it's definitely quite handy. To find out how exactly it works, I had to dig out some son of sensors and connect them to a bridge. I'm pleased to report that they linked very quickly and uh, soon enough I had my PR sensor, contact sensor, switch and temperature and humidity sensor linked to my bridge. All of it done without any issues. These custom alarms can be renamed to your liking and you can specify what kind of sensors or buttons are assigned to each preset. When activated, it will arm all the sensors, and when the sensor is triggered, it will sound the alarm. And by sounding alarm, I don't mean just sending a push notification. Now the son of Zigbee Bridge Pro is also equipped in, with a buzzer. It's not a particularly loud buzzer, but if you set it to 100%, you will be definitely able to hear it across your house. One thing I discovered in testing, while you can add a contact sensor, PRR, or button to trigger the alarm, you cannot use the temperature sensor to trigger alarm based on humidity or temperature. 
you'll have to refer back to automations panel where you can create your own scenes and trigger notifications instead. And don't worry, you can also arm this arm and sound that siren directly from the actions using scenes menu. So if you want to take advantage of the new functions and automate them to a certain degree, you're free to do so. We have a new hardware, so it's also worth talking about the range. So I compare the range between the old uh, Zigbee Bridge and the new Zigbee Bridge Pro to figure out what I'm dealing with. And there is a couple of points I'd like you to note first. When it comes to Zigbee, mesh network's range isn't the most important factor, it's the actual mesh that you're going to build. But as the new device has a support to up to 120 devices, it's obviously worth checking it out just to be aware how far you can actually place the sensors without investing in additional hardware. Another thing that you should bear in mind that the range between a coordinator and the end device will also depend on both devices. So I've placed my Zigbee bridge in a corner of a house to simulate the probably most difficult scenario and I walked around the house trying to figure out if it's going to cover entire house. And for my two-story building I had no problems whatsoever in every single corner of the house. Even going outside I would still have a reception but it's worth noting that as soon as I went to my backyard, which was on the opposite end where the Zigbee bridge was located, I ran out of the signal uh, about three to four meters outside of the house. So the total reception was pretty decent unless you're going to compare it with the previous generation Zigbee bridge from Sonoff. Remember that EFR32 inside of the previous bridge? It turns out that it has a much better range because I could walk around the entire garden I would still have a range with my button. The same button, just different bridge, and I would simply gain about 7 to 10 meters of extra range. That's quite impressive. The last thing to try was really to hook up Zigbee Mini to see how quickly I can issue the commands and sending commands from the bottom through the Zigbee Bridge Pro and then to my light via Zigbee Mini was very very quick and I had no problems whatsoever. So yeah, everything's working as intended in my books. And since I still had some time on my hands, I figured out it would be nice to actually grab a couple of different sensors from other ecosystems, namely Tuya, uh, Agara and Xiaomi, and see if they are working. So I've tested an IKEA button, I've tested Agara uh, sensor and Tuya sensor, the PR sensors, but none of them were connecting to my bridge which means some of Zigbee Bridge Pro isn't really compatible with other ecosystems in a current version. I'm sure that's going to change once we're going to flash it with the custom firmware. So what's so pro about the son of Zigbee Bridge Pro? Well, well on paper that support for 120 devices might sound impressive, but if you already have the previous generation bridge, which supports up to 32 devices and properly propagated Zigbee mesh network, it's very unlikely that you're going to reach your device limit anyway. Unless you're planning to build a, I don't know, a security system with a lot of different sensors, but none of the routers in your network for some reason, then I don't think you should be that concerned. You can get one or the other and you'll have pretty similar performance in your network. But if you're looking for the range, you're going to be better off with the other one. So if you are looking for a Zigbee bridge or Zigbee devices, then check out the description of this video where you're going to find links to everything I've talked about it today. As for now, I'm going to wait for the community to come up with a nice and neat way of hacking Tasmot on it and then check it out again with a custom coordinator firmware. That's going to be super exciting. As for now guys, well, you know what to do. I do not have a posting schedule, but if you want to know when that uh, hack is available and where you can actually put the task motor and a custom coordinator on it, you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain all that. But uh, follow me on any given social media, get in touch and let's keep the conversation going. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Take care. Bye. Oh look, I can zoom in and out and in and out and in and out. <laughs>